bridesmaid who came with you today. I have a lot of my favorite ingredients. It's July here in the mountains and we are using apple mint, akuba, cosmos, foxglove, celosia. I have two colors. I have some spray roses. This is called Gazelle's Folly. I have some dahlias from uh, my friend Judy down in Asheville. I also have some zebra grass from Judy. And these cute little double click cosmos are from Nicole at Flourish Farm in Asheville. And one last little thing that I've got here is a little bit of cup and saucer vine that I've been growing outside. This is one of my seeds that I started earlier this year. It hasn't bloomed yet, but it has a really nice um, variation in color on the leaves and everything that's fun to add to a bouquet that has th these little touches of purple in. So that's what we're working with today. One of the questions that people ask is, what's the difference between a bridesmaid bouquet and a bride's bouquet? Well, that's for you to decide, but whenever I'm approaching the topic, a lot of times I will do a modified version of what I'm using in the bride's bouquet. So while her bouquet may have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven ingredients and be really, really, um, interesting in terms of ingredients. I scale it back a little bit for bridesmaid bouquets. So let me put one together for you and then you can decide what you'd like to do, but there's all kinds of ways to approach bridesmaid making bouquets. I um, have done an all greenery bouquet for bridesmaids before, sometimes just one flower and then a mixed for the bride. So it depends what your client's looking for, but it's fun to have some options handy in your mind whenever you're considering what you're going to do. Now this apple mint smells fantastic. I like to consider scent whenever I'm putting a bouquet together because it's gonna be walking around with somebody all day and they are probably gonna to wanna to put their nose up to it. So this is my fragrant, my little fragrant touch for today. Now, whenever I'm putting, holding the bouquet, I just like to do a light, loose grip, just like a C. Maybe, maybe pretend that you're making a vase with your fingers there that you're just putting them through and letting them hang. Now you'll notice that everything's pointed up right now and sometimes that can happen whenever you're creating a bouquet. So we've got to get it balanced out. So watch what happens whenever we loosen up these stems underneath. See how without moving anything in my hand, I've just made these things go out and open. You'll also know that you're gripping your bouquet a little too tight if you find that this is happening and that your, and your things are moving on you. But the important part in this step is just to make sure that everything is holding steady just as is without you gripping or anything like that at all. It should feel very light and loose. Don't move on past this step until you have this, this sense and this feeling that it's supporting itself, it's holding itself. You might have to do a little clipping down here to get it just right, but that's the important part. I like this apple mint because right here we have some foliage that's uh, just acting as a block that it's holding everything steady there, which is nice. I also wanted to add a little bit of this Akuba and just a touch of the Cosmos foliage. This Cosmos foliage is pretty to layer in amongst the apple mint. So that's what I'm doing with that. Just another layer of interest and texture, but using a flower that I'm going to use as also the little finishing flower in the bouquet. So it's still just one ingredient that we're looking at here. Now this piece can really be divided into two. A little small piece here and a medium piece here. So I went and I have two here, but now I'm just balancing that. Every action equal and opposite reaction. So I'm needing to balance out these two one over here, and now I'm doing one over here, two over here. So that's one way, just one of the many ways that you can approach balance. That's how I'm doing it today. Also gonna add some foxglove in, and the foxglove is what helps bring some color to the outsides of the bouquet. The apple mint has just a little touch of lavender in it, which is nice, but I'd like to have some more of this dark purple in the bouquet as well. So we'll thread that through here. So we've got those. I'm gonna give these just a little snip. And the Akuba is very 
bushy. So I can just edit the branches. So now I have something that's more manageable that I can work with. So I really just need a little snip of that in the front and in the back, perhaps on the sides. that foliage that's nice and full and add some body low in the arrangement helps support the flowers that we're gonna add on top of this. I love how it has these little speckles on it and it is, um, it's an evergreen shrub. Fun little fact about it is that there are male and female plants and if you have the male and female plants uh, planted in proximity together, they'll some of them will get little berries on them, usually in the winter time. Okay, so celosia. This is fun. There's a couple different types of celosia, just like there's a couple different kinds of daisies and dahlias and things. So the shape on this one is nice and spiky. They also come in a shape that uh, I don't know how to put this other than it looks a little bit like brains at the top of it. And that was one of the very first flowers whenever Jesse and I, uh, there was a little store whenever we lived in Lynchburg that I really loved to go to called the Farm Basket. And one of the local growers there would take bouquets each week and it was my favorite little place. They had a little cafe inside. So I would go there and I'd see what kind of flowers were there that week. And little did I know that someday flowers would be, flowers would be my life. But I remember this pink bouquet, little monochromatic number that just stole my heart. And it had that little bit of brain celosia in it. Very romantic, right? I wish I could find a better day, better way to describe it other than a brain, but that's, <laughs> That's what it looked like. Just spinning around here, seeing what's going on in the back. It's good uh, to keep spinning so you don't overwork one section over the other. And oftentimes, the one that you try the least, uh, the least with ends up being my, the one well, at least that I try the least with ends up being my favorite side. So a lot of times the back, <laughs> the back ends up being my front by the time I'm all said and done with it. So that's the variation with a little bit of orange in it. But we could also swap it out for this yellow that I think is very pretty. So I wanted you to see what it would look like maybe with a little bit of this orange. And now I'm gonna pull this out and work in some of the yellow. I think either one could be very pretty in an arrangement like this. But the yellow, um, strikes my fancy a bit just because of how it plays in with the spots on the leaves and if you see just this subtle bit of yellow on the underbellies of the foxglove it's a really nice really nice option as well but sometimes changing just one ingredient can really affect the the overall mood of the bouquet i just wanted to point that out Sometimes when you get a flower order and there's just one flower in particular that's just not quite the right shade. And sometimes I end up just eliminating whatever that is and then everything seems to flow so much better after that one small piece is out. So if that happens to you, don't worry, just pull it out. Maybe you can use it um, in a more discreet place like an arbor, a low, in, low in the arrangement where it's not as prominent or maybe it just gets omitted altogether and, and put in a restroom arrangement or someplace that's a little bit further away from the event that's taking place, if it is indeed for an event that you're creating the piece for. All right. So I'm just doing a quick little check to see how the colors uh, distributed among, among the bouquet. Just checking on my shape. Okay, so let's move on now to some of these, these gazelle spray roses. They're very pretty, low petal count, open really well. It's a favorite peach of mine, and it has just this little touch of a pink purple that's nice. 
so this is going to be our accent flower in this bouquet. Don't need a lot, just a couple. Spring roses can be a little tricky sometimes because of how they're actually arranged on the stem. These are at the same level and they're pretty prominent. So that, that same levelness takes away um, from if you're looking for a lot of movement in your bouquet, a lot of ins and outs, you want to stay away from things that are right there side by side next to each other. So you can just clip that back and then you have a little bit more control over how the flower sits in the arrangement. You can pull it down a little bit lower, tug something up a bit higher. If they aren't physically connected to each other. So sometimes I have to sacrifice a flower or two to be able to get things moved around in a way that I like. So you'll see I did a little bit of an implied line here where your eye is connecting the dots between these peaches, of these um, little spots of peach that we have taking place here. And then if we flip the bouquet around, you can see how just adding this one on the back now helps me connect another line on the opposite side of the bouquet. So making the most use of the blooms that we have by doing that. And I'm gonna add my dahlias, taking a peek to see, again, like this would be tough to use this way, but I'm gonna use this cute little tall guy. This dahlia is a little bit past prime. You can tell mainly because its petals are falling away, but if you feel the back of a dahlia and it feels a bit sticky, you know it's on its way out. It's good if they feel nice and smooth. Now this one, I wanna use the flower. I'm gonna pluck away these side guys cause I can't do a whole lot with those. So we're sort of moving some things around to make that workable. Oh, this one's losing a couple guys too. Not, not nearly as much. These are a few of my, these uh, few flowers have been chilling in the cooler for a few days after the workshop this year. But I didn't want them to go to waste. I wanted to put together a few videos for you while I was here. So they're just a day or two past their, past their moment. I love the color of these. They have the lemon yellow that we see in the celosia that we have, and then the peach that's in our spray roses, and the purple that's in the foxglove. It's the transition flower in this bouquet that lets us move between all of those different colors and keeps it feeling nice and gentle. Now this last dahlia that I have, I'm going to add to the side right here. Whenever the bride walks up the aisle, usually it's this side of her body that's facing um, all of the, the guests and the cameras. So I'd like to put a little focal, focal flower over in this area to catch, to catch the camera. And then this little guy. And you'll notice I'm arranging in front of a mirror. It's my favorite way to do it. Then I can see what it looks like. If someone's just out there holding it. So I'm just gonna tuck this little guy, float him up there. Have some zebra grass. This is a little bit overwhelming as one big piece. So I'm gonna snip it. And then just arrange, rearrange it a little bit. I love uh, these, these textured foliages are really fun and interesting to me because even though they feel smooth physically, visually, they're very textured. That's what's fun about the Akuba as well. You have all of those different spots 
dots or stripes and variegation changes in color makes a difference. I don't want to overdo it on grass. It's very powerful because it has a lot of very strong actual lines that um, there's very a lot of very commanding so just a few of those is all I'm looking for and then these cute little cosmos look at these ones I don't think this is the, this isn't the double click but has some nice variation in color that looks so pretty with these dahlias, just a watercolor kind of moment with those. And these are just meant to float up above the rest of the flowers. Give us a little breath of air. if I wanted you can see too how you know this is a darker variety how just adding that touch of dark changes the palette and on a big piece like this with so many side shoots it's important to edit it down to a manageable place where it's cleaned up and it fits in the spot that you have in mind for it Some people like to clean all of their bouquet stems ahead of time, and sometimes I do. It just depends what my ingredients look like, but sometimes I hesitate because I might need to just adjust the way that this branch, you know, clip a few things off the branch to see. But, but before I clip a few things off the branch, I maybe want to see where it's going to go so it fits in that, fits in the spot that I have in mind. Maybe one of these little side pieces we clipped off can still come to hang out, but now we have a little more say over exactly where it goes since it's not attached, which is nice. Okay. I'm going to tape this with just a little bit of waterproof tape. Just very gently. I find that this waterproof tape is helpful in things not scooting around on me because it actually is sticking to the stems, which is nice. Oops. I like to go backwards with it once I've gone forward once. Okay, so that's put together. My last little touch, this little bit of vine, I think this could happen or not happen, but I'm just going to stick it in here, weave it through some of these flowers. An interesting little touch of texture. The cosmos is, is serving a somewhat similar purpose. It has a that little light airiness to it. So I could really take it or I could really take it or leave it. But it's kind of twisty and fun. So we'll leave it in there for now. But the nice thing about having the tape on before you put the vines in is that it, you can get it stuck to the, 
get it stuck to the tape, weave it through. If you like it, leave it. If you don't, just tuck it off. All right, let's wrap this little baby up. have a little bit of lavender silk. It's the same color as the apple mint. Little flowers on that. Trick is to just be real loose with the wrapping. Got this teeny tiny little it's called a corsage pin, just three-fourths inch. Now that can just tuck, tuck in there, grabbing both of the ribbons I just tugged. And grab another pin and you can fold that down over and pin on top if you want. That's all a matter of, matter of preference and how you want to finish it, but And then these stems, I like to cut pretty short. So there's my little bridesmaid bouquet ready to go down the aisle. Maybe in your bride's bouquet, you just Add a few more ingredients or even just a few more dahlias. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more for this, visit teamflower.org slash free.